So topic, glycemic variability. Indices, practical utility in the management of diabetes. We have heard from Dr. Amit how technology is going to change all of our practice of diabetology. And now we are going to learn something that how we can use this technology in practical aspect. No conflicts, no financial disclosure for this presentation. Only thanking to Dr. Mayur for the academic opportunity. So what we see, blood glucose level in non-diabetic, normoglycemic, normal glucose tolerance person and we think that it is a the, it's a dynamic flowing blood with a glucose that is there and that's maintained within a narrow range of 70 to 120 milligram per deciliter and that is maintained and it is known as homeostasis but what happens when it is type 2 diabetes in people with type 2 diabetes there can be marked waves like fluctuations and when uncontrolled diabetes is there, you can have tsunami-like of situations. Peaks and nethers can be there. And more marked in amplitude, duration, frequency in type 1 diabetic patients. So we are talking about glycemic variability, that is fluctuations. So what is glycemic variability? It refers to fluctuations in blood glucose levels, both peaks and troughs. It can be intraday, that is within day, or it is day-to-day -day variability or intraday variability. But it leads to high oxidative stress. Each and every fluctuations leads to high oxidative stress, whether it is upward or whether it is lower one. It leads to increased risk of severe hypoglycemia. So the one thing that is more important to remember, we are having target blood sugars. We are in the range. But you can see, even when you are in the range of glycemia, we are well-maintained target range. Still, you can have highs and lows. So this is very important to know. But when this, why this happens, why this is high and low, which happen, why, why it happens, it can be due to four reasons. There can be circadian rhythm of hormone sensitivity, that is insulin and counter-regulatory hormones. Both of these two uh, type of hormones, insulin and counter-regulatory hormones like glucagon, catecholamines, cortisol, growth hormone, they have got a tussle of balance and influence. And there is a circadian rhythm of their sensitivity. What are the organs which are involved? The second issue is organ receptive, receptivity to these hormones, liver, muscle, adipose tissue. And the third very important, there is independent physiological influences that can happen by the food, type of food, type of fiber, amount of carbs, at the time of food consumption, exercise, age, illness, adiposity and very important organ dysfunction. There can be chronic liver dysfunction or CKD. All these can lead to increased fluctuations. Then the fourth very important is pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic and time action profile alteration of glucose lowering drug and specifically insulin. So all these things contribute to glycemic fluctuations. So friends, variations are the rule. It is a glucodynamic word. It is a glucodynamic word. That means a dynamic and it is a flowing thing. So it means that you can have patterns, you can have trends, you can have ranges, and you can have directions also. And these variations can be hours to hours and days to days. So glucose vari variations are not limited only to postprandial excursion. There can be highs and lows also. Such fluctuations are specifically very, very marked in type 1 diabetic patient, but lesser degree in type 2 diabetic patient. And importantly, Peaks are usually corresponding to maximum values after meals, particularly mid-morning, while troughs are observed over interperendial period. So dysglycemia of diabetes includes two components. Our age-old known fact of chronic persistent hyperglycemia that can lead to both excessive protein glycation and activation of oxidative stress. And there is more focus, recent focus on acute glucose glucose fluctuations that can that is known as glycemic variability and it is believed that frequent or large glucose fluctuations may independently contribute to diabetes related complications and these complications have got more deleterious effect than sustained hyperglycemia in the development of diabetic complications so there can be a, a consequences of glycemic variability really very deleterious there can be cognitive impairment there can be cardioscope damage, there can be arrhythmogenicity, QTC prolongation can be there, there is increased mortality. Also, ICU mortality has been reported to be increased when there is more glycemic fluctuations. Cognitive impairment already talked and reduced quality of life that is there and negative mood. But very important to learn 
glycemic variability is just proportional or it is it increases the multi multifold effect of hypoglycemia both the amount duration and number of hypoglycemia gets increased only to show you that long term glycemic variability variability or short term glycemic variability increases neuronal damage it is a pan neuronal damage which can happen with glycemic variability by increasing akt pathway reactive oxygen species increase protein kinase c pathway getting up regulated nkf beta pathway is up regulated and then inflammasomes are getting up regulated all can lead to pan neuronal damage so it is very essential to mitigate glycemic variability and very important glycemic variability increases future risk of hypoglycemia when you try to come back to the normal glycemic range or the target range your glycemic variability increases so it's a very important very essential to mitigate glycemic variability so there is lot of literature which is linking glycemic variability to hypoglycemia and uh, how we are managing how we are monitoring diabetes because monitoring is an essential part of management of diabetes traditional static markers or you can say the snapshot markers or i always say it is a then and there type of parameter it is then and there type of parameters like hba1c fasting plasma glucose and postprandial glycemia and we get these from smbgs or hospital lab values and there can be visit to visit variations that can be there so that was the pre older version of monitoring of diabetes that is glycemic triad but now we have moved on to hexstat we talk about hba1c fasting plasma glucose postprandial glycemia to be under control hypoglycemia overall should be decreased nocturnal hypoglycemia should be decreased and importantly we should target glycemic variability so we are going to from triad to hexstat of monitoring of diabetes these are our age old uh, you can say it's the first year of mbbs of biochemistry that you can see here benedict test of color the changes which we are uh, tuned at that time to look at the level of glycemia in the urine so that was the benedict test and now the dr amit has clearly shown that guardian 3 libre 2 ebert and then dexcom g6 and ever since e3 are already coming up and there we are all into this type of uh, utilization for uh, looking at the glycemic variability these are the parts of cgms but importantly what is smbg and cgms how they are different smbg that is self monitoring of blood glucose measures capillary blood glucose and it gives you a snapshot or sporadic data whereas continuous da data comes from cgms 5 minutes or 15 minutes da data that is coming from cgms and cgms measures interstitial glucose so here the two are different there is a transmitter which is there in interstitial fluid and that measures glucose from here and you have got blood glucose meter that measures glucose in the blood directly but important to learn here there is a lag between finger stick and continuous glucose monitoring levels once once one there everything is normal or stable glucose level remaining stable both are same whether you are dealing with S cgms or smbg or finger stick level of blood sugar but once it is rapidly rising glucose level cgms may be lower than the finger stick levels and once it is rapidly falling glucose cgms may be higher than the finger stick level and there is a lag period of 10 to 15 minutes that can be there see smbg will give you a uh, various level of uh, glycemia at the sporadic or snapshot value but what is happening in between hypos and increase blood sugars hyperglycemia you get from cgms value about hba1c gold standard of chronic hyperglycemia undoubtedly we are believing this and we are using this uh, technology modality also but here there are certain things which has to be born in our mind for patients smbg uh, hba1c means uh, it can guide you the treatment how your quality of diabetes care is there and what type of treatment you are getting or what type of quality of treatment you are having that is hba1c for the patient for physicians it is it has got diagnostic value risk of complications linked are to the hba1c value and also our algorithmic changes which we main made for the management of diabetes is also based on hba1c value for regulators uh, a drug approval is based on hba1c and it uh, gives you the efficacy model for the drug that is working that is hba1c but there are certain issues we know that hba1c has been validated right from dcct trial to ukpds and also advanced accord vadt in recent cvots 
all have looked at HbA1c also, but and very clearly, one percent decrease in HbA1c leads to thirty-five percent, around thirty-five percent decrease in microvessel complication. And long term, there is benefit also in macrovessel complication. But there are a lot of fallacies in A1c. So, so A1c depends upon three things: lifespan of RBC, number one, then glycation kinetics, number two, and there is ambient glucose level that is chronic hypoglycemia that is replicated by A1c. And this list of fallacies in A1c is not complete. There are a lot of things which in influence the HbA1c values. Either it can lead to high HbA1c fallaciously or it can lead to low HbA1c value fallaciously. So we have to look at all these things. There are certain limitations, limited ability to reflect short-term glycemic changes. It is a mean plasma glucose and long-term chronic hyperglycemia that is being replicated by HbA1c from 90 to 120 days. Cannot reflect postprandial hyperglycemia and fasting hyperglycemia separately. What to do with HbA1c of 8%? We don't know. HbA1c value less than 7% may be a subject to glycemic variability and postprandial hyperglycemia. Then you can have similar number of same, same type of patient, patient one and patient two with similar HbA1c, but you can see the glycemic variability is very much different in patient one in comparison to patient two. So what HbA1c tell you? It will tell you only the mean plasma glucose. It is not able to address the hypoglycemia and not able to pick up the glycemic variability. So only it tells you the mean glucose reading. So we have to look at something else. So the talking about glycemic variability should be there even when you are able to achieve glycemic control. You are moving from 9.4 to 7.4, 5 HbA1c, but you can see the glycemic variability persists, rather it increases when you reach it near to the targets. So how we can manage, measure glycemic variability? There are various parameters, there are various indices, standard deviation, mean amplitude of glycemic excursion, and mod, that is a mean of daily difference between day-to-day -day variability. So we have got, and there are other parameters like percentage per CV, that is coefficient of variance, the conga, ADRR, LBGI, HBGI, MAG, interquartile range, and AGP average glycemic profile. I'm going to touch about all these in, in a brief way and making it more practical. So you have got two type of parameters, two type of indices. One is amplitude matrices, that means how much it increased from mean plasma glucose, and time-based matrix, how much duration it has increased. So it is amplitude-based matrix or it is a time-based matrix. It can be intraday variability or it can be intraday variability. So there are these are the uh, indices which we use. For short-term glycemic variability, to talk about intraday variability, you can use standard deviation, coefficient of variance, MAGE, CONGA, ADRR, LBGI, HBGI, MAG, and time in range. For short-term interday variability, mod, ADRR, AGP, or interquartile range that can be used. Sorry, so there is long-term glycemic. Many. Yes, two minutes remaining. Okay, so fine. So, so glycemic variability long-term, we talk about HbA1c, fasting plasma glucose, and these. So the uh, MAGE is basically dietary-specific matrix of amplitude of glycemic excursion, mean of glycemic excursion from NARD to peak, and but it has to be has to be there more than one standard deviation. It takes into account glycemic peaks and nadir occurring daily, but does not account to total number of fluctuation. Standard deviation is variation around the mean plasma glucose. And if you take divide standard deviation by mean plasma glucose and multiply <laughs> with 100, it is coefficient of variance. And it should be 36% or less than 36%. LBGI only talking about low plasma glucose or hypoglycemia excursion, whereas HBGI talks about hyperglycemia and it is not talking about hy hypoglycemia. But more importantly, we are using time in range. And that is more practical approach to look at the glycemic variability. This is time in range, which refers, and there are two things. One is time in range. That means how much time you spent out of 24 hours into this range. And there is a target range. And standard target range is 70 to 180 milligram. There are various. Uh, this is for the first time in 2019 February when ATTD the guidelines, they come up and they simplified the issue and made much more practical or actionable and interactive way of presenting glycemic variability. And they gave this 10 key metrics and that I've already enumerated that these are the metrics which are used. It is mean glucose and number of days it, CGM has to be worn for 14 days. Percentage of time CGM is active, at least recommended 70% of the data from 14 days. 
Then mean glucose, glucose management indicator, glycemic variability, it has to be percentage of coefficient of variance less than 36%, time above range, time below range, and there are various patterns that has been seen that, that I can just, I'm going to elude it here. Type 1, type 2 diabetes, routinely the range is 70 to 180 milligram. You have to spend more than 70% of 24 hours. That means 16 hours to 48 minutes should be there in time range in routine type 1, type 2 diabetic patient, older patient, high risk type 1, type 2 diabetic patient, and high risk of hypoglycemia. You target range remains same, 70 to 180, but spending time should be 50% or more than 50% of the time. In pregnancy in type 1 diabetic patient, it is 63 to 140 milligram per deciliter is the range. More than 70% you should spend time in this. And the pregnancy in GDM type 2 diabetes, still you have extrapolated from type 1 diabetic pregnancy targets of 63 to 140. Time above range is from 170 to 180 to 250. That is the first stage, less than 25% in routinely. From 250 beyond, it should be less than 5% time that has been spent, that is time above range. And for older patients, you have got certain liberal targets for hypoglycemic patients, certain more frequency of hypoglycemia, more liberal target can be there. For pregnancy, again, it's very strict, no, above 140, less than 25% of the time. And for time below range, it is 70 to 54 is the cutoff, one cutoff, and next stage is below 54. So it should be less than 4% and less than 1% respectively. And for hypoglycemic, uh, more patient having more hypoglycemia. So there can be lesser, lesser time. It should be minimized to spend time in time below range. So this is the if appropriate way to present the glycemic variability. ADA also had uh, updated its living standard of glyce um, uh, medical care. And there are a lot many publications and uh, uh, trial uh, uh, publications which are there. And I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, our uh, next uh, speaker, Dr. Bansi Sabu and Dr. Uni Krishnan are right there at the top on these uh, in these uh, publications and again you have got an a multinational panel reporting mm. time in range with individualizing time in range in various data of patients having hypos microvascular complication macrovascular complication and communicant infections and there can you can and this time in range has been clearly validated in various trial 10% decrease in time in range 60% increase in retinopathy, 40% increase in microneuria, 25% increase in diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And this is newer version, which we are all following for last three, four years. That is ambulatory glucose profile. It gives you four uh, pattern. That is, there can be 10th percentile or uh, 5th percentile and 95th percentile. That is light blue lines. 25th percentile and 75th percentile. That is dark blue line. And median line is 50th percentile. Only thing you have to see how much width is there in between the lines. Lower the limit, lower the width, lesser the glycemic variability, and that is the most important dictum which we can follow here. So there can be, this This is the best way to represent, or you can say that it is the most actionable visual indicator, color marking is there, and patient involvement is maximum when you put this, these thing in front of you, and your patient is also involved in management of diabetes. So there can be various, uh, 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 where we can use, Basically, when there is disparity in type 2 diabetic patient, type 1 GDM, no issues and high, various complications, there is no issue. But in type 2 diabetic patient, disparity between fasting plasma glucose and postprandial glycemia and HB1C is there, then CGMS or AGP is the answer. At this patient for hypoglycemia, AGP is again an answer. Need for patient education, non-adherent patient, non-compliant patient and patient not going for insulin. So this is the best best way to show him that this amount of hypoglycemia is there and that can be managed very nicely with insulin. So it can add to your insulinization when you use this thing. Then again, I, I'm going to just have one or two things for two slides more that there is a glycemia glucose management indicator also. And if there is a discrepancy between A1C, CG and GMI, if A1C is on higher side, then your GMI risk of hypoglycemia is high. And look also for fallacious A1C value. If C GMI is on higher side, A1C is on lower side, set for lower A1C target, hyperglycemia risk can be on higher side. So you have to, you can be more aggressive here. This is regression uh, line plot indicating that 19% time, it is a co co uh, concordance between GMI and your uh, HbA1c uh, uh, CGMS value as mean plasma glucose and HbA1c value. So if there is discordant, then answers can be very easily can, can be given. So another thing which is coming up, glycemic risk we are, we index. Are yes, but only last, last slide is there. So, so this is that 
if you are looking at time in range, also look at time below range. So it's a very important time in range should be clubbed with time below range. And that makes a sense for glycemic risk index that can be calculated here. There is an equation and which has got more weighted for very low than low and less weight for very high and high glycemia. So lower hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia should be picked up when you talk about time uh, in range also. So concluding my talk, concept of variability is often used in a negative sense when referring to human pathology. However, variability plays a fundamental role in all primary control systems in our body. Glycemic variability is not always negative because changes in glycemia are physiological consequences of various issues. Certain degree of variability is also observed in subject with normal glucose tolerance, but once it is impaired glucose tolerance, type 2, type 1, it increases like anything. So increasing use of CGMS will certainly promote better assessment and management of glycemic variability. HbA1c is a biomarker. Remember, it is a biomarker, mean plasma glucose biomarker of chronic hyperglycemia. Whereas time in range is more actionable, more intuitive, more accurate, more realistic marker of glycemic variability that has got Casual role, also casual role in diabetes complication. So it's a time to shift from time in range, but we should have both SMBG for the best control of glycemia and also look at time below. Thank you. Okay.